So I've sat down to do a review of the Mexican Grand Prix and realistically, where do you start with it? Where do you start? Well, I've got to save that for a little bit later on, but I saw this on Facebook and this is from the Autosport um, Facebook feed. And this is, as you can see from Autosport, George Russell believes only one driver was against changing F1's racing guidelines. So, 19 out of 20 drivers said, well, if it's incorrect, make the change today. I'm glad to see those incidents were punished, George Russell. So, this is what is reported by what is supposed to be an authentic source that is giving people, fans of the sport of motor, motor racing, you know, because they've got a dedicated web page, magazine, uh, information stream about motorsport. So they should be able to inform us and tell us stuff about the sport that we invest our time and energy into. And that's what they're saying. 19 out of the 20 know it's wrong. So what's going on? How did it ever happen in the first place if they know it's wrong? What's going on there? Um, and one thing that most of you will probably not understand about this, and I don't mean to be... Um, condescending we, we don't even bother looking at this most of us and the only reason I've looked at it is because I've had to look into the, the whole corruption because no media has ever revealed the true reality of Abu Dhabi 2021 my it, those people are new to the channel as you go through my videos you'll start seeing things about Abu Dhabi 2021 that you've never seen reported elsewhere the mainstream media never has and this is the reason places like autosport and motorsport and other motoring publications, they're all uh, part of what is um, Motorsport Network Media LLC. OK, and GMF Capital are the firm that has bought Motorsport Network Media. OK, so it's so I'll tell you, you can look on Wikipedia in 2016. Haymarket Media Group sold Autosport and the rest of its motorsport portfolio to Motorsport Network. And Motorsport Network, well, they're not really interested in motorsport. They're interested in money. Uh, this is Gary Fegel, I think his name is. Here's Gary, billionaire. 1.7 billion real-time net worth. This is on uh, the 28th of um, the 10th, 2024, it says. So you can have a look at Forbes magazine and read about Gary. Gary doesn't uh, interested in people. He doesn't. Uh, he's not interested. He's not. He, he doesn't care about lying to you, lying point blank to your face, lying to your children, misinforming you. No, Gary doesn't care about that. Gary doesn't give a stuff about you. Gary. Gary cares about that. Yeah, that's all Gary cares about. Fuck you. That's that's all Gary thinks about is fuck you. Have that. That's all that Gary wants, OK? So he will own me media publications and purposefully present liars, um, validating what 19 of 20 drivers competing in the sport know to be wrong. And then he'll put in front of you various, uh, well, so suppose a journalist, OK? And I'll come back to this particular one, but this uh, supposed journalist employed by Autosport, so getting a wage, uh, going around the world to these Grand Prix uh, and having a paddock pass, speaking to the FIA, because that's what you're talking about there, speaking to the FIA. You can scroll down here um, and I'll just put this in front of you. This is the kind of prick that we're dealing with, a so-called journalist. Feels like I'm scrolling down a long way, but we'll get there. We'll get there. It's worth it. Come on. We'll find him. Here he is. Here he is. Let's have a look at this one. So. He's genius. There's yeah. no other way of looking at it. Bloody hell. Well, I can't operate this. Why is it? Why is it going silent on me? What Max Verstappen has been doing by racing to the apex, turning himself back into the attacker when he's being overtaken. I've said all the way through this, what Max Verstappen is doing is genius. There's yeah. no other way of looking at it. I view it as a professional foul. I'm not alone in that autosport. I'm not alone in that in the paddock. There's no denying it's brilliant. It's very clever. What Max Verstappen has been doing by racing to the apex, turning himself back into the attacker when he's being overtaken. I've said all the way through this, what Max Verstappen is doing is genius. There's yeah. no other way of looking at it. 
I view it as a professional foul. I'm not alone in that autosport, I'm not alone in that in the paddock. There's no denying it's brilliant, it's very clever. What Max Verstappen has been doing by racing to the apex, turning himself back into the attacker when he's being overtaken. I've said all the way through this, what Max Verstappen is doing is genius. There's yeah. no other way. So kids, if you want um, a job sucking the Dutch sausage, then, um, you know, that's what you can do. If you want a job as a, as a fluffer uh, in, in adult entertainment, then uh, right. you can go and get a job uh, at Autosport working for Gary Fegel. So if I can hopefully find where I was, why has it gone back to this now? Well, I had to pause that to uh, find this again. So let's see if I have the same difficulties. That was that mitigating. So right, so this is the same guy again, um, fluffing the Dutch sausage again. So let's uh, have a look. FIA officials I spoke to said 10 seconds is the standard penalty. If we take it back to Austin, Lando Norris getting five seconds for overtaking off the track. Same officials saying, that was mitigating circumstances. It would have been 10 seconds because of the fact that he was clearly in a battle with another car that also went off. They felt five seconds was appropriate. So that explains it. Would Lando Norris have gone off the track if the other car hadn't forced him off? But that explains it, doesn't it, mate? You're, you're used to... What, what, his mouth wide open, ready to receive the sausage. I also don't think it's very clear and very helpful. Like that, this is this is the sort of thing where the complaints about inconsistency can creep in. FIA officials I spoke to said 10 seconds is the standard penalty. If we take it back to Austin, Lando Norris getting five seconds for overtaking off the track. Same officials saying that was mitigating circumstances. It would have been 10 seconds because of the fact that he was clearly in a battle with another car that also went off. They felt five seconds was appropriate. So that explains it. I also don't think it's very clear and very helpful. Like Right, so that explains it, but I don't think it's very clear or very helpful. So it doesn't explain it then, does it, Colin? Okay, so don't tell us that that explains it if it's not very clear and it's not very helpful. You're supposedly a journalist. To be a journalist, you need to be able to report on a situation that is going on and you need to be able to report on it inform people about what's going on and be able to give context, have the knowledge of the subject that you are talking about in order to ground whatever it is that you're talking about in context in order to enable people to understand. OK, that is your role as a journalist, not just to just parrot, you know, what other people are saying is happening and have no ability whatsoever to break it down, to critically analyse it and to state the rights and wrongs of the situation. Instead, you give us the bullshit, don't you? You, you go, that explains it, but I still don't think it's very good. So you said 10 seconds is the standard penalty. If we take it back to Austin, Lando Norris getting five seconds for overtaking off the track. Same officials saying that was mitigating circumstances. It would have been 10 seconds because of the fact that he was clearly in a battle with another car that also went off. They felt five seconds was appropriate. So that explains it. I also don't think it's very clear and very helpful. Like that. <laughs> Absolutely right. You're not very helpful, are you? That explains it, but I'm not very helpful. What have you explained? You've explained that corrupt. Well, you haven't explained that they're corrupt. You've just said this is what they've done. Have you explained? That's not explanation. That is just a basically a a rundown. That is just saying what they've done. That's not explaining anything, is it? This is this is the sort of thing where the complaints about inconsistency can creep in. FIA officials, I spoke. Why would people be complaining? What is inconsistent? What would be the right thing? This is journalism. What it should be is when you break a situation down. What has happened? What is wrong with that situation? Why is it wrong? What is the controversy over? Why are people unhappy about it? What would be a fair thing to do there? OK, this is the sort of thing. But, but again, you, you are a child. OK, you, 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 you have no ability to actually understand something, but, but you're not employed to do that. They don't employ people with ability. They don't employ people who are willing to ask the questions. They don't employ people who want to expose the truth. They employ fluffers that will just parrot narrative and they'll give them a little pat on the head and they'll give them a biscuit. Well done, you. You get to go to the Formula One Grand Prix as long as you keep saying that Max Verstappen is a genius. 
OK, then you'll keep getting paid. Well done you. You keep telling Max is a genius. You keep sucking the Dutch sausage. You keep saying Max is a genius. Uh, don't explain anything. Don't you worry your little heads about that. Just say, yeah, they've explained it, but it's still not very clear. They've explained it. Everybody, you've now had it explained here. You've had it explained, uh, but it's not very clear. Move on. But now that you've all had it explained to you and it's, and it's not very clear, don't you worry your little heads. Don't you worry your little heads. Anyway, what I'm going to do is take my time really on this because there, there is so, so much. I've gone, gone just a bit into the audio and just picking out all that's relevant. At the moment in time that Max forced Lando off the track, Lando was in second position. So Max forced him off the track and took the position off the track. That really dangerous move where Max just lunged his car at him. So he took a position off the track and that wasn't given back. OK, so that put Max, sorry, that put Lando a place behind him. But it allowed Charles Leclerc to go through. So Lando went from second to fourth in a race. And not only did that happen... He then lost time and was only released when Max Verstappen pitted. So of the 20 seconds that Max Verstappen got as a penalty, well, how much was lost to the leader? Because Lando Norris was 0 0.8 of a second behind Carlos Sainz when he got shafted off the track illegally. That allowed Charles Leclerc to go through. That allowed a big gap to build up. I've got Brundle, and I need to get this out of the commentary clip. Brundle saying he would treat the back of Verstappen's car like the back end of a donkey. You can't go racing against somebody that any time you get near them, they're going to try and put you off the track. That's not stock. You know, this is Formula One, not stock car racing. Brundle is saying in commentary, treat the back end of Verstappen's car like the back end of a donkey. You can't go Formula One racing in those conditions. It's absolutely disgusting. So I need to be able to put this all together to evidence it, show you all what is actually the, the recordings of the race, show you the actual timings of it, show you that Lando Norris, by the time Verstappen pitted, and obviously Lando Norris is shitting himself, thinking if I try and overtake now on Verstappen, he's, he's going to try and put me off the tra track again. I don't want to die today, is what Lando Norris was thinking. So he loses then 10 seconds on sight. And then what was the winning margin in the end? So who has cost somebody the, the time in the race that has ultimately maybe cost them that race? Cost them a further seven points. How many points did it cost him last week? And this is the guy that's enabled and not banned for it. And like I said, I've got, to, I've got to put this together and evidence it. I don't like just saying things without bringing the evidence. I like you showing you the actual things that are going on. It's an irrefutable. We, 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 whatever I say, we're always going to get some pricks in the comments section. They go, no, it's not that. No, it's not that. No, it's not that. Because they're clueless little pricks. Kids, kids, kids. If you think you know better than the Formula One drivers, 19 out of 20 of them say that whatever's being said about these regulations, not regulations, guidelines for overtaking, 19 out of 20 of them are saying they are wrong. 19 out of 20 of the, the drivers in that sport that do it for a living, 19 say it's wrong. And if you, with your little wank sock in your bedroom, think you know better yeah okay put that into perspective you played a few games on your computer maybe you've played mario kart a few times and you think you're like the same as a formula one driver okay you think you can throw a banana skin out when you're doing an overtake oh that'll send them spinning off the road won't it kids yeah no no it doesn't work like that kids you don't know all right so keep your opinions to yourself okay use 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 this as a learning tool Okay, so absorb the information and 
don't start talking about it for a few years until it's had chance to percolate and you've had chance to develop your understanding okay then you'd be a lot better thought of anyway thank you all for your time and i will try and make some better videos soon because like i say it's going to take a lot of time to sift through all of this and, and break it all down there's so many different points so many inconsistencies at, at mexico um and and they're, they're both inconsistent at Mexico in terms of the stewards in decisions and the penalties applied. And they are they, they totally contravene what happened at Austin last week as well. So and we've got another turn one, Max Verstappen sh shoving another car off the track at turn one as well. So there's, there's, there's so much, so much coming from Brundle and Crofty, so much bullshit. So like I say, I've, I've got to break it down into various sections. Otherwise, I, if I just went through that audio on its own, it would take me about four or five hours. And I know nobody's going to watch that. So I've got to try and present it in ways to get people to see what's actually going on. So thank you all for your time. Those of you that are new to the channel, thank you for subscribing. Thank you to those of you that have been subscribed for a long time and support the channel. Um, if you're new, the channel's been set up to expose the true reality of Abu Dhabi 2021. The truth that has never been exposed by mainstream media. The truth is that Sky Sports were lying to us all about the rules of the sport before Michael Max Massey made his supposed error. OK, they lied about what was possible. OK, they're presenting that you don't have to release the lapped cars. You don't think uh, it's not mandatory. They tell you that the, the purpose of releasing them was only to get them out of the way of the race between the leaders. This is all lies. OK, there's a lot of the motor racing public that do not understand what the safety car regulations are actually for and what their purpose is. And it's quite simply Lewis Hamilton had gone round and was lapping. And at that stage, he'd lapped up until Lando Norris, who was at that stage in eighth position and Gasly was in seventh. So in Abu Dhabi 2021, Norris was in a race with Gasly. Because the leader has passed Norris and then there's a safety incident and the safety car is deployed, then the safety car picks up Hamilton. Norris has to wait behind Hamilton and Gasly disappears off around the track. And the whole purpose of the unlapping procedure is from being just less than 12 seconds behind uh, Gasly. Norris was actually closer to Gasly in Abu Dhabi 2021 than uh, Hamilton was to Verstappen. And you cannot allow somebody crashing to then mean that Norris ends up losing a lap on Gasly. A safety incident basically neutralising racing, neutralises racing for everybody. And then before you restart racing, you have to reset the conditions for everybody so that it's fair conditions for everybody. It resets it back to almost zero for everybody. So all of the previously built up, up advantages have been wiped out. So you're all in that safety car snake in the correct race order, nose to tail. And that is the purpose of doing the unlapping procedure. And they go, oh, are oh, they going to release the lapped cars? I don't think it's mandatory, but that's normally on a wet day in Belgium. Uh, oh, and they'll all get blue flags, you know, and it's all bullshit. It's a mandatory requirement and it's underpinned by the FIA, International Sporting Code, which dictates sporting fairness to every single competitor in that race. Just because the leader has made it past you, it doesn't mean you're eliminated from that race and no longer able to challenge the car in front of you for a position. You're still a racer. You're still in the race. You're still racing for championship points. Lando Norris was in a battle between him, Leclerc and Sainz for fifth position in the championship. He started that championship, uh, that last race in sixth. Uh, Leclerc was in fifth. Science was in seventh. Because of the way they, them cars finished in that race, Science jumped from seventh to fifth. Who's told you that? They created a two-car race-off, neglecting everybody else. Who's told you that? Nobody's told you that, have they? Nobody's told you that. Why? Every form of media has parroted the same narrative. Autosport, motorsport, owned by billionaire here, Gary Fegel. He's never told you that. He's never told you that because you know what? He's not interested in that. He's interested in capital. Capital. Use money to buy shit so that they charge you more money for shit 
and he pockets that money. Capital, capital, capitalism. It's all about becoming the billionaire and fuck everyone else. That's what these people at that level, they're all doing. They're all in the billionaire's club. And they're all got shares in each other's businesses and therefore they all comply to the same narrative. So, yes, it is a conspiracy. Those people at that level, they conspire to feed us the same bullshit narrative. Understand that. Understand that. And if you don't understand that, I will be putting it out in videos and breaking it down so you can see where these ties are. There are some other videos in the distant past that have exposed some of this, but there will be more to come. So again, thank you for your time. Hopefully this has uh, opened some of your eyes to certain things you might not have heard or seen before. Uh, but as regards yesterday's Grand Prix, I'm going to need to take a little bit more time in producing something for that. Cheers.